to yet another video. You have read the thumbnail already, so you can imagine that today's video format will be a little bit different than usual, because I will try out three days of the vegan diet and three days of the carnivore diet back to back and tell you a little bit about it. So a little disclaimer right in the beginning, I will not talk about the health factor at all. I am not a dietitian. I have no clue what's best for you. The opinions on the internet are very divided and voices in the mix tend to be very loud. I do not care for that. I'm only going to talk to you about my personal experience with that, how practical it was living in Japan for each of those diets and also maybe give you some recipe ideas. And that's it. So you can lower your pitch box now. Yeah, Your core beliefs will not be questioned. This could be a turning point of this channel. The turning point where all the hate comments starts. Comments are comments, no? No, don't hate me. I'm sensitive! <laughs> so to give you a little bit of a baseline of how I have started, uh, let me talk to you about my usual diet. I would describe my diet as a default average diet. I'm eating breakfast, lunch and dinner, always at the same time. My breakfast looks the same every single day out of convenience and also because I like it. Um, I tend to snack in between lunch and dinner when I have the working low and I need some more energy. Um, I'm cooking most of my meals at home. I would say on average I'm eating out once a week. Uh, when I have a busy weekend with friends I'm eating out maybe twice a week. Um, sometimes I have a lazy weekend and I'm not eating out at all so on average I would say once a week. My cooking is not overly healthy. I'm also using convenience products when, I'm, when I cook. For example I'm using curry paste when I'm doing curry or I'm using mapo tofu paste when I'm preparing mapo tofu and I'm, I've never done the broth, any broth myself. I'm always using powder. So I try to cook myself, but I also include convenience products. So I think it's very average. <laughs> In addition to that, I have absolutely no food allergies and I'm also not a picky eater. I will try absolutely everything and I will like most of it. I do not like mushrooms with a few exceptions and I do not like raisins and marzipan with absolutely no exceptions but other than that I'm basically good to go. I, I like food from different cuisines and I also like to try foods from different cuisines so yeah I'm uh, very open-minded when it comes to that and I'm also looking forward to this challenge to widen my horizon when it comes to food a little bit. My biggest food sin is sugar for sure. I'm eating something sweet every single day. It has become a little bit of a bad habit to eat something sweet every day after dinner. My mind just says, okay, now you need something sweet to finish the day off. It doesn't have to be something uh, something to eat, like chocolate or cookies. Um, sometimes it's also enough to just drink half a glass of soda. But again, then I'm drinking half a glass of soda every day, which is also not ideal, right? So therefore, I hope through this experiment, I will reduce my sugar intake as well. And that's really all you have to know. I think it will be a great time actually. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, with that said, let's start with the three days of veganism. So before I show you what I've eaten and how I felt afterwards, uh, let me tell you a little bit of an anecdote of my first fail already. Because I was two days in already, but I forgot that I have a lunch date with two of my co-workers. And of course, the lunch place we have chosen in advance didn't have any vegetarian or vegan options on the menu. So I ate my tonkatsu in peace and restarted the three days afterwards. So this was already my very first vegan fail. <laughs> this made me realize, however, how hard it is as a vegan in Japan to go out. There are vegan restaurants in Tokyo. Some of them are really great, um, however, not so many. And I imagine that the vegan movement in other countries is much bigger by now, so that you have at least a vegetarian default dish on the menu and maybe even a vegan default dish on the menu. In Japan, however, not so much. If you're going to the uh, typical izakaya restaurant, your vegan option is edamame, and when you're really lucky, they have cabbage and salad. But that's it. So this is a struggle a vegan living in Japan will face. However, in my case, I would say it is just bad appointment management. Because, of course, if my coworker know that I'm a vegan, we would have chosen a vegan option instead. I just forgot about it. So, in the end, my fault, but still a struggle that uh, you have to keep in mind. 
The next three days, however, were very successful. I prepared all my food at or most of my foods at home, um, and I will show you now with what I started my day. Let's go to breakfast. This is my breakfast every single morning. It never changes. I'm very boring in this sense. Every morning I'm eating a yogurt, a banana and some oats. It's always the same. Sometimes on the weekend I'm a little bit more adventurous because I'm eating them this. And on the side I have one scrambled egg, but only if I was not too lazy the day before to wash my dishes. But yeah, this is fixed. It never changes. Every single day looks the same. Yeah, I'm boring in this sense, I'm sorry. But as you can see, it's not vegan, so uh, I cannot eat it for the next three days. So I will change it up a little bit. I will replace the yogurt with soy milk. So this will be my new breakfast for the next three days. Easy enough. So for breakfast, my routine didn't have to change at all. Uh, you can find soy milk in really every supermarket. So it was very convenient, very easy. And I must say, it was the first time for me to try soy milk in its pure form. And on the first day, I thought, there's no way that I will eat it three days in a row. I really didn't like it. But on the second day, it was much better already. And on the third day, I even found it delicious. That shows how fast your taste buds are changing around. And uh, the next time I cannot find my default breakfast, maybe the soy milk as an alternative is a really good option for me. Next is lunch. For lunch, I have eaten for one day leftovers for dinner. I will show you in the next section. And for the other two days, I have bought a, a vegan onigiri from the convenience store and also made a salad. You can see it here. This is lunch. This is salad with half an avocado and half a paprika. The other half is for tomorrow's lunch. And I also bought an onigiri um, with a seaweed inside. This was the only onigiri in my convenience that actually was vegan. I asked the staff about it. The others had at least um, at least egg inside. So yeah, this is my lunch and this will also be tomorrow's lunch. Maybe the onigiri changes if they have another one available. But yeah, lunch. For dinner, I tried three different vegan recipes. I made them all up, so some of them are more successful than others. <laughs> the one day I made some veggie curry, the other day some tortillas with tomato sauce and veggies, and the next day some pasta with spinach and tomatoes. And I must say, the curry and the tortillas I will include in my normal diet routine from now on, because both of those dishes were superb, very delicious, and you did not miss the meat or dairy or eggs at all, so very great. The pasta, however, well, <laughs> I tried. I would usually put cream in it as the base of the sauce, um, but cream is not allowed. And there is no soy cream in the supermarkets uh, here in Japan because usually the Japanese kitchen does not use cream at all. You can find cream everywhere, but um, it's not a staple ingredients in the Japanese kitchen, so of course there's no vegan alternative to it. So I couldn't find any soy cream, so I thought, oh, maybe I just bought soy milk, right? Use this one. Do not use this one. That's not nice. <laughs> Last but not least, snacks. I started to snack all day long. Not only as usual between lunch and dinner, but also between uh, breakfast and lunch. I was hungry all the time, <laughs> which makes sense now because uh, the portions you have seen in the video, usually I'm eating the same amount, but with added fish and, uh, and meat on top, which has a lot of calories. So of course my usual meals would be more caloric dense than my vegan options were. So it makes sense that I was very hungry. So I snacked on nuts, and fruits and edamame all day long in between. So my overall verdict when it came to those uh, three day is two. So my overall verdict when it comes to this uh, three day experience, I was actually very surprised by myself that I do not need meat and dairy and even eggs to be as, to feel satisfied. I was very hungry all the time, um, which just means you have to control your portion sizes much better when you are on the vegan diet. However, I really liked all the dishes and within the dishes I did not miss any meat or fish 
And because you're you're cooking with so much vegetables, the colors pop so much. And I'm a very visual eater. I like to put every dish I'm making must have something green in it. Like I'm doing mapo tofu, but it needs to be a shit ton of broccoli just to be visual pleasing. And this you have with a vegan diet just because you're using so much vegetables. So this was actually very great. I also imagined beforehand, and maybe this is a kind of a stereotype, a prejudice you have when it comes to the vegan diet. I thought it would be much more complicated to figure out uh, where like milk powder and egg powder, I guess, I don't know, is in all those products. I guess when you are eating more bread, because in Japan usually milk powder is in, in the bread you can find in the supermarket, then you have to be a little bit more aware. But um, I bought like very simple ingredients and only for the tortillas and for the onigiri I had to ask in store if there's really no meat and fish and dairy and eggs in it. But other than that, it was pretty straightforward, I must say. So yeah, to summarize, on the one hand, it was very nice to see that it was much easier than I have expected it beforehand. I was very pleasantly surprised about myself that I do not feel overly restricted when choosing the vegan options. And the food itself was very nice. It was very tasteful and very visually pleasing. But on the other hand, I was basically hungry nonstop, which made me think about food all the time. And I did not like this feeling. And it was quite of kind of challenging going out in Japan when being on a vegan diet. So yeah, you have your pros and cons. So let's see how the carnivore diet is holding up. So yeah, when it comes to the carnivore diet, the strictness levels differ a lot. There are some carnivore diet options that say you can only eat raw meat. We are not going to do that. Um, I put a link in the description what website I've consulted when it comes to the carnivore diet. So we are going to eat fish, meat and eggs and that's it. On the website, there's also written that you can eat cottage cheese, but I've looked in all the supermarkets nearby and there's no cottage cheese available. So we are going to eat fish, meat and eggs and that's it. So let's start with breakfast. So again, this is my default standard breakfast. However, in the carnivore diet, all kinds of carbohydrates are forbidden. That includes oats and also all kinds of fruits and vegetables as well as natural and processed sugars are forbidden. So that excludes my banana. Ah yeah, and dairy is also forbidden, so... Hmm, I am fucked. Well, eggs and bacon for breakfast it is. Usually the next section would be lunch, but I'm putting lunch and dinner together because guess what? Time doesn't matter on the carnivore diet anymore. You eat every... I mean, you're not eating everything, right? <laughs> you're eating meat, fish and eggs. But uh, your lunch and dinner, you cannot differentiate anymore. It all looks uh, the same. You can eat you can eat the same thing all day long if you would like to. Um, so yeah. Uh, I've eaten this one. I've eaten uh, grilled chicken one day, uh, grilled fish and scampis the other one. I had a steak with egg and I also had some sashimi. And I also went out for one day because it was a Saturday and I went to an izakaya restaurant and I was actually pleasantly surprised that it is pretty easy to be on a carnivore diet and going out in Japan because the typical izakaya food is very meat based. You have meat on the stick, <laughs> all kinds of meat, also um, all kinds of, uh, you have liver and all kinds of uh, meats that are recommended when being on a carnivore diet. You have also grilled fish and also raw fish. So this was actually very easy. Of course, I couldn't have beer, at least I think I cannot have beer, so I didn't drink it. And I would usually drink a lemon sour, but lemon is also forbidden, so I drink, and I, I have, so I drank an unsweetened black tea by being in a izakaya. The things you do for your carnivore lifestyle. I should have mentioned to the izakaya stuff, however, that they not put sauce all over the meat sticks. But I gave myself some lenience with that. I'm okay with that. I didn't eat the onion, however. Yeah? 
No lenience here. <laughs> Last but not least, snacks. I also snacked by doing so. I I have tried beef jerky for the first time in my life, and uh, you can be part of this experience. For a snack in the carnivore diet, I have bought beef jerky, and I have never eaten beef jerky in my life, so this will be an experience for sure. And value dried sausages. We will try both of it. I can tell you already, the beef jerky smell is intense. And it was crazy expensive. Is that normal? It's very salty. I have not yet decided if I like it. Or oh, it's very salty. And you try... You chew it. And you have the feeling that it's becoming more and more in your mouth. It's not bad, but it is a little weird. Beef jerky. It's crazy, I feel very American now. <laughs> it's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I think it won't become my favorite, but oh. <laughs> and I didn't expect it being singly packed. Single packed as well. Great. That's that's Japan in a nutshell a little bit. Plastic everywhere. This smells even worse. It smells kind of sweet and not like sausage at all. I don't know I'm German. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting, but well. Mm. Let's eat more beef jerky. <laughs> so what is my verdict when it comes to the carnivore diet? On the one hand, I was very surprised that you're not hungry at all, even though the volume of your food is much lower compared to you eating carbs like pasta and rice, but it's still caloric dense and it really keeps you fuller longer, so you do not have this intense hunger feeling. Um, you also feel super lean, so this was actually kind of nice. Like, yeah, I, I had the body moment for sure. <laughs> It also was very easy going out while living in Japan on the carnivore diet, which was also a plus point. And I'm not sure if it's a plus point or a negative point, but it reduces your time in the supermarket a lot because your options are so few. And what I also liked was that it got rid, maybe it, after three days, of course, it maybe not have gotten rid of it, but because you're so limited and sugar is not allowed, you're just not eating sugar, which is a good point, I think. However, <laughs> and there is a big however, at least for me, and for sure it's a me problem, but it was sucking the joy out of food. It was not only that I was not looking to the next meal, when I was thinking of eating meat and eggs again, I felt nauseated and a little sick to my stomach. It was really... It was a weird feeling. I, I didn't want to eat at all. So, yeah, maybe if you are in the routine, you're eating only fish, meat and eggs, this will change after a while. But, uh, yeah, I needed all the willpower I had to finish the three days. And every day was a challenge, for sure. In addition to that, it was hellish expensive. So, yeah, this is the end. I could find good and bad things for each of this diet, those diets. However, again, take it with a grain of salt, because I only did it for three days. Of course, there are benefits and also downsides that you cannot experience when doing it only for three days. I, I don't know, for example, I was not even in ketosis when doing three days of carnivore. I think ketosis starts after what, four to seven days. So I did not experience that at all. This is something that you will experience when doing it 
simply longer. And maybe I will make a video about it, how I try both of those diet out for a longer period of time. If I do so, then after Christmas, because my grandma makes the best, the best cabbage rolls, which is cabbage and inside is minced meat. And yeah, in both of those diets, I cannot eat it. So this is simply not an option. It's not an option. And your grandma doesn't make half as good of cabbage rolls, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm coming for your grandma. But yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. It was a very talkative video. Let me know if you like the style where I talk a little bit more. Let me also know if you have experience with the carnivore, the vegan diet. I'm really interested in that. What are your experience about it? And if you have nothing to say to me, guess what? That's also fine. I still hope you're joining me next week. And up until then, I hope you have a very great week. See you next week. I'm crap.